We come now to Romans chapter 5, verses 12 to 21. In this great passage, grace is brought into contrast with sin, and the obedience of Christ is set against the disobedience of Adam. It is placed at the beginning of the second section of Romans, with which we shall now be particularly concerned, and its argument leads to a conclusion which lies at the foundation of our further meditations. What is that conclusion? It is found in verse 19, already quoted. For as through the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, even so through the obedience of the one shall the many be made righteous. Here the Spirit of God is seeking to show us first what we are, and then how we came to be what we are. At the beginning of our Christian life, we are concerned with our doing, not with our being. We are distressed rather by what we have done than by what we are. We think that if only we could rectify certain things, we should be good Christians, and we set out, therefore, to change our actions. But the result is not what we expected. We discover to our dismay that it is something more than just a case of trouble on the outside, that there is in fact more serious trouble on the inside. We try to please the Lord, but we find something within that does not want to please him. We try to be humble, but there is something in our very being that refuses to be humble. We try to be loving, but inside we feel most unloving. We smile and try to look very gracious, but inwardly we feel decidedly ungracious. The more we try to rectify matters on the outside, the more we realize how deep-seated the trouble is within. Then we come to the Lord and say, Lord, I see it now. Not only what I have done is wrong, I am wrong. The conclusion of Romans 5 verse 19 is beginning to dawn upon us. We are sinners. We are members of a race of people who are constitutionally other than what God intended them to be. By the fall, a fundamental change took place in the character of Adam, whereby he became a sinner, one constitutionally unable to please God. And the family likeness which we all share is no merely superficial one, but extends to our inward character also. We have been constituted sinners. How did this come about? By the disobedience of one, says Paul. We are sinners, not because of ourselves, but because of Adam. It is not because I individually have sinned that I am a sinner, but because I was in Adam when he sinned. Because by birth I come of Adam, therefore I am part of him. What is more, I can do nothing to alter this. I cannot, by improving my behaviour, make myself other than a part of Adam, and so a sinner. Do you see the oneness of human life? Our life comes from Adam. If your great-grandfather had died at the age of three, where would you be? You would have died in him. Your experience is bound up with his. Now, in just the same way, the experience of every one of us is bound up with that of Adam. None can say, I have not been in Eden, for potentially we all were there when Adam yielded to the serpent's words. So we are all involved in Adam's sin. And by being born in Adam, we receive from him all that he became as a result of his sin. That is to say, the Adam nature, which is the nature of a sinner. We derive our existence from him, and because his life became a sinful life, a sinful nature, therefore the nature which we derive from him is also sinful. So as we have said, the trouble is in our heredity, not in our behaviour. Unless we can change our parentage, there is no deliverance for us. 
but it is in this very direction that we shall find the solution of our problem. For that is exactly how God has dealt with the situation. In Romans chapter 5, verses 12 to 21, we're not only told something about Adam, we're told also something about the Lord Jesus. As through the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, even so through the obedience of the one shall the many be made righteous. In Adam we receive everything that is of Adam. In Christ we receive everything that is of Christ. So, we are presented with a new possibility. In Adam all was lost. Through the disobedience of one man, we were all constituted sinners. By him, sin entered, and death through sin. And throughout the race, sin has reigned unto death from that day on. But now, a ray of light is cast upon the scene. Through the obedience of another, we may be constituted righteous. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And as sin reigned unto death, even so may grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Our despair is in Adam. Our hope is in Christ. God clearly intends that this consideration should lead to our practical deliverance from sin. Paul makes this quite plain when he opens chapter 6 of his letter with the question, Shall we continue in sin? His whole being recoils at the very suggestion. God forbid, he exclaims. How could a holy God be satisfied to have unholy, sin-fettered children? And so, how shall we any longer live therein? God has surely therefore made adequate provision that we should be set free from sin's dominion. But here is our problem. We were born sinners. How then can we cut off our sinful heredity? Seeing that we were born in Adam, how can we get out of Adam? Let me say at once, the blood cannot take us out of Adam. There is only one way. Since we came in by birth, we must go out by death. To do away our sinfulness, we must do away with our life. Bondage to sin came by birth. Deliverance from sin comes by death. And it is just this way of escape that God has provided. Death is the secret of emancipation. We died to sin. But how can we die? Some of us have tried very hard to get rid of this sinful life, but we have found it most tenacious. What is the way out? It is not by trying to kill ourselves, but by recognizing that God has dealt with us in Christ. This is summed up in the Apostles' next statement. All we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. But if God has dealt with us in Christ Jesus, then we have got to be in him for this to become effective. And that now seems just as big a problem. How are we to get into Christ? Here again, God comes to our help. We have, in fact, no way of getting in. But what is more important, we need not try to get in, for we are in. 